Good evening, my friend. Welcome, finally, to WDW Radio Live. A little bit late, but I finally made it. Forgive me for my uh, tardiness. I promise you, I had a good reason. I need to put my glasses on so you can see exactly. I am uh, trying to find you a good angle here. I am sitting outside of Planet Hollywood. Uh, it's been a little bit of a chaotic day, so forgive me for being late tonight. Um, Things don't always run according to schedule, but it's fine. We make the best of it. Uh, quick question first. Is my audio okay? Right? Again, testing out another new mic tonight. And two, where are you watching from? Whether you are a first-time viewer or if you have been here and part of the nation and the community, uh, please let me know uh, where you're watching from and how long you've been watching. Uh, it is a beautiful night, Mandy, here in Disney Springs. Some Floridians might call it cold. I uh, I call this beautiful. I love jeans, a little bit of a jacket weather. This is exactly how I dig it. Um, and I love being able to sit outside here. There's literally, when I say that there's nobody else here, I mean, it's just me. Like, it is just, it is just me. It is just us. Uh, we literally have the entire outside uh, deck and balcony here over at Disney Springs. Um, I want to quickly apologize because I know there was a little bit of confusion and chaos um, in terms of what was happening tonight. Um, there was uh, Planet Hollywood reached out to me and said that uh, John Reese Davies was going to be here tonight. He was donating some items to Planet Hollywood. Um, <laughs> there was some miscommunication that had happened. Unfortunately, we had to pull that back literally last minute, which is part of the reason why I'm live. Uh, he was able to come. He was able to make that presentation, but it was not open to the public. He did actually do it in the middle of Planet Hollywood, walked around and, and spoke with people a lot. He's the nicest man in the world. And then I get, did get a chance to actually uh, sit and chat with him just for a few minutes. I've got some audio that I'll share. It was crazy loud in there. Hopefully uh, it came out well. And um, did I see the clothes tonight? Just I know they allowed me. Uh, they brought me out here and allowed me to uh, to come out and, and do the show from here. So again, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. Uh, I really do appreciate it. If you don't know who John Reese Davies is, um, you probably know him from such roles as Sala in the Indiana Jones franchise, he's Gimli in Lord of the Rings. Uh, for me, I, I know. I mean, I know him obviously from those roles. I'm not really a big Lord of the Rings fan, but I remember watching him in Shogun, right? Remember sort of that, that huge, um, I mean, it was a television event in 80, whatever it might have been, 81, 82, 83, somewhere around there. And he will always be Professor Maximilian Arturo from Sliders. Uh, one of the other folks who was here tonight, I thought I was the only other person talking to him about Sliders, but that was one of my favorite roles. Um, it was a show that unfortunately suffered not always from the best writing. It did not suffer from incredible acting. And this man, who's just about to turn 80 years old, has such this incredible commanding presence in any role that he takes, right? So if you're a Sliders fan, let me know, right? If you dig Sliders, um, actually, one of my friends, you probably know Matt from Attractions Magazine, named his son Quinn after Quinn Mallory from Sliders. Like, that's how, um, that's how much of a Sliders fan. So we were like geeking out over Sliders. But sitting there and talking with uh, John, and, and, I, and I tried to sort of convey this in a very awkward question because I had I had so many questions I wanted to get out to him all at once and it was stupid loud and I had problems with my video. Like it was just, it was this cavalcade of, of, uh, of elements. But he has such a commanding presence no matter what role he is playing. It's the voice it's the accent, it's just his cadence. But there's also something incredibly warm and comforting and approachable about him. It's why Sal is our guide for Indiana Jones Adventure out in Disneyland, because he, he does sort of, sort of owns the room when he walks in, but he also makes you feel very comfortable. And when I was talking to him about how much of him he sort of brings into these roles, there's a lot of him, because I see it here, and the person that you know, I was, I was fortunate to get to chat with a little bit tonight. You see all the characters in him, and you see him 
in all of those characters. I'm not sure if that makes any sense. Um, incredibly humble, very kind, ridiculously smart. Um, there was two other folks here, um, which I'm allowed to, I guess I'm allowed to say, and forgive me that I, I, I don't have her name in front of me. One, uh, she is an astronaut, like a literal astronaut that has spent uh, significant time on the space station, um, which I could have just had a separate conversation with her about her experience up in, in space. Um, but her husband um, runs, owns, whatever, a company that is building data centers, building data centers on the moon. Like, not 10, 20, 30 years from now, like in four weeks. Like they're starting to, they've already started to build data centers on the moon. They are literally backing up the planet. When we talk about sort of offsite backups and the importance of redundancy and backups, they are ba they are, the goal is sort of back up the earth onto the moon in terms of data. And I, and I used to be in IT. I got very, very nerdy talking about you know, transfer protocols and data bytes and sizes and things like that. And it's, it's the, the line between Star Trek and the Jetsons and 2024 is, is not just blurred, it's starting to disappear because you almost couldn't fathom being able to do something like that. And they're, they're I mean, they're doing it, right? They're already bringing data up. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, I think, well, I think I can say like, they're bringing up backups of like the Declaration of Independence, right? And they're downloading like the Constitution, like to test data speeds back and forth. It's incredible. Uh, it is incredible what the technology is. And I think I lost one of my bags. That's bad. Um, I think I lost a bag with some of my gear in it, uh, which is not awesome. That is not awesome. Um, I'll have to go back inside and see. I just had somebody looking for it and they can't find it. So, um, I'll have to do a little quirk search as I go through. Anyway, you don't care about that. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, I did get a chance to chat with them. I did take some audio, the video I had some issues with, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to play that either on the show, a live show, a short, whatever it might be. Uh, I would really love to get some time with him one-on-one -on -one because he has, you know, Disney connections too, obviously um, from, not just from um, Indiana Jones, but he also, let's see, let's see if you can, if, who can name, what is the other John Reese davies Disney connection that is not from the Indiana Jones franchise? He did appear in something else very Disney related. Uh, see if you know where you know his voice from. He does a lot of, of voiceover work, but um, you know, I love, and he's going to be, uh, part of the reason why he's here is because he's going to be at Megacon this weekend. You know who else is going to be at Megacon this weekend? This guy. I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm going to be sharing best I can because the internet there, no bueno. But I'm going to share as much as I can uh, from Megacon as I can. Uh, but he is going to be at, uh, at Megacon this weekend, and I forgot where I was going with this story. It doesn't really matter, but... Uh, Jeff, see what's going on. Dude, Professor Ar Maximilian Arturo from Sliders, uh, I was having a nerd. Oh, so my goal is to hopefully get him on the show and, and chat more about some of his work. Uh, but just sort of our some of our side conversations. I mean, he's a very, very, not just well-spoken, but he's a well-read man. Like, very, very, and, and hopefully if the audio came out, you'll be able to hear it. In terms of being a futurist, um, in terms of his concern for the planet and the people. Uh, Jeff loves him from Lord of the Rings. He was Gimli from Lord of the Rings. Uh, thank God he didn't ask me any Lord of the Rings questions because I've only seen like half of it once, I know. I, it added to my goofy movie, Lord of the Rings. I have, I have a lot of things to do. Uh, Princess Diaries 2 is one. Um, there's also an animated, uh, I, and forgive me, I'm, I'm um, from this, there's an animated um, movie that he voiced over as well so uh, I did start late so forgive me for for starting very late and then you know I was not going to turn down the opportunity to um, speak to him so let's just see he was uh, Princess Diaries 2 yeah so he was Kasim in Aladdin and the, it's Aladdin and the Prince of Thieves right um, can we be I have seen Lord of the Rings I've seen the two towers but it was like many 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 moons ago 
and I need to sort of watch them. I need to sort of sit down and have like a day just to sort of eat bad, I mean, good food and I'm really concerned that I lost my other bag. Um, this is no bueno. I need, I need what was in that bag. There was unfortunately expensive equipment in that bag um, and I don't know what happened to it. And that makes me very, very sad and I'm not gonna make you walk through, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you walk through um, Planet Hollywood with me. We'll, I'll do the show and then hopefully, yeah, it is not, it is not here. It was a little bit of chaos, sort of going from one place to another and moving around and everybody was late. So anyway, I, I checked my bag, Karen, it is not, uh, it is not in my bag. Oh, we're not going to be dancing out here, my friend. That's why I asked to turn down the, uh, the audio. So, uh, Mark says his son is an excellent actor as well. Yeah, I'm not, I won't just leave my I won't just leave my phone out here and make. Um, I will. I'll I'll end the show a little bit early. I feel bad. I started late. I'm going to I'm going to end early. Just not the way I like to do things around here. Uh, but. Before I forget, I'm going to try and make up for it. Um, so I've got a couple of things coming up. So tomorrow, tomorrow, and either Friday or Saturday, I'm going to be at MegaCon. Let's do it. Sing it. Yes, let's sing it. Good. Um, I have had problems over the last few years trying to go live because the signal is so so bad. But I will share videos and photos on my Instagram stories as much as I can. Next week. I will not be here. I won't even be here. Um, I'm going to take you with me somewhere. Um, I'm going to take you somewhere a little bit different. Next week and the week after. Don't freak out when I tell you this. There's a method to my madness. Um, next week, I am going to be coming to you hopefully live on... Wednesday night. I don't know what my schedule is going to be. Ooh, karaoke's like crushing hard downstairs. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Um, next week, I am going to be coming to you from the sea. Uh, I will be at sea next week on the Allure of the Seas, which is not a Disney ship. But I am, um, you guys can hear Dream On going on in the background. Uh, I am uh, I'm traveling with one Rebecca Mankin Esquire. She's not an Esquire. I'm traveling with Becky and doing a little bit of research for a non-Disney event that I am looking to do at sea. Stay tuned. Uh, more information to come. And then the following week, I will also be on a different cruise line, continuing in that research, um, as I will be on a princess, I'll be on the sea print, the sea princess, sky princess, I'll be on the sky, sorry, I'll be on the sky princess the week after, so we're going to, which I think is really good, because I want to see some of these other ships, I want to see some of these other cruise lines, and then be able to compare and contrast, so I can speak better to some other options for you, your family, business trips, whatever it might be, so... Um, there are some fun times ahead. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you over the next few weeks. So stay tuned, but do not be surprised. Um, nobody has, has stolen my phone. It will be me from a Royal Caribbean ship and then from a uh, Princess Cruise Line out of Fort Lauderdale uh, the week after. So um, it should be interesting. I'm very, very excited to see what Bill Bill Daddy says, Becky, no throwing Lou overboard. Please do not throw me overboard. Uh, not until I get at least my affairs in order. So, um, so yeah. So we shall see. Um, and I'm curious, be curious to hear from you. You know your thoughts about the other ships, things that you want to see on board, um, and your experiences with some of these other cruise lines as well. So uh, you probably like. I saw some of the comments in the clubhouse. You're like, wait a minute. You were on Fox yesterday talking about. You were on Fox yesterday talking about Epic Universe. Now you're going on a royal ship and a princess ship. Who are you in order to be done with Lou Mangello? Don't worry. I promise. I promise. I promise. All right, it's fine, Hollywood. We need you to help us up. We've got a few birthdays out there. And I want to do a quick birthday roundup. We've got a quick birthday roundup. Over. 
Oh, good. We're going to do the whole birthday round. By the way, if you guys can find my bag, I'm, if you can, if my, if you can my, I'm missing a bag. I'm really bummed about my bag. Um, I have like some expensive accessories in that bag, so this is not. Uh, it's not birthday, awesome, buddy. as they say. But happy birthday, Delaney. I'm happy that you're spending it here with us at Planet Hollywood. So, next thing you know, after this, he's going to say he's a sweet guy. And we'll see. Uh, we shall see. Uh, so, I got a very it's Maddie. Birthday. Maddie is three. So he's turning three. Three years old. I remember when I was three. Elizabeth, I, I plan on going to try. I have a feeling that when I go back inside, um, my bag. Oh, man. this was not the bag I wanted to. This is not the bag I wanted to lose to. We had. They had us set up in one place and then quickly like get up and run and move somewhere else and then it was just a little chaotic. So um, I'll have to see. I'll have to see. So um, yeah, it's not. Just, listen, it's just. Dude, with the accent, give me five, man. Um, it's just stuff. It is just stuff. We will. Uh, it's fine. It is fine. Um, don't stress for me. I know there's only one of two places it could be, and I will. Uh, I'll go find it, or I'll see if they have some sort of a lost and found type of thing. So, um, I'm not ignoring you to touch. I, I, I know. I feel bad. I feel bad because I was late. Um, and now I feel bad that I was distracted by the bag. But it's either there or it's not there. So it's no sweat. Um, Becky's excited to see Princess again. It's been years. Kyle's stress eating Chick fil A. I haven't even had. I literally gave up dinner upstairs with Sala um, so I could come down and spend the night with you because Wednesday night really is my favorite night of the week and there was no way I was going to miss and to potentially disappoint you. But it's all good. It is all good. Let's see where you are. There you are. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. super excited to be so um, Before I go, they're all they're taking selfies. Um, right. So my question to you is, <laughs> the Raiders of the Lost Bag, um, did you guys get a chance to listen to the interview, the conversation that I had with Lanny Smoot this week? I know I do a long show. This one was a little bit shorter. I was sort of given a, a relatively short window of time. Of, of people that I've had a chance to sit down and speak with that I wish I had two, three hours with. Alex Mayer is number one, one because he just popped in. Alex, good seeing you. And number two is Lanny Smoot because his personal story, his personal journey, and all the things that he's done and worked on is absolutely remarkable. And I, I wanted to approach it from a lot of different angles. I tried to get it very quickly uh, from a number of different perspectives, but um, fascinating, fa brilliant, brilliant individual. Um, and I hope that that came through and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, please spread the word, share it out, invite others to listen. Because uh, it's not about listening to me, it's about listening to Lanny and the stories that he had to share. So. Um, yeah, a re remarkable, remarkable individual. Um, Alex, always good to see. Alex, we have to, when I come back in next month, we have to get together and do lunch again. It's been, it's been too long. So Jim says, great interview. Uh, so it's actually funny, and, and this is not, there's a, there's a reason I'm telling this story. So when I, I just spoke at um, a podcast conference this past weekend, and I was talking about some of the 20 lessons I've learned over 20 years, and one of them was about interviewing, and we'll go into the depth of the lesson. I said, look, as an interviewer, right, the, the one thing that you want your guest to say, in addition to sort of, you know, sharing the story that he or she has ever said before, the goal for you as an interview should be singular. You want to wow that guest with a question that he or she has never heard before, something that, that is intriguing, something that is thoughtful something that is insightful. And what you want that guest to say, Lanny gifted me at the end of the interview. We chatted for a few more minutes and I was saying something. He goes, man, I gotta stop you for a second. He goes, this is what you want your interviewee to say to you. He's like, you're a great interviewer. And I was like, my day has been made. Like, that's it. This guy has been doing probably the barrage of interviews since this all came out. When somebody says that to you, right? When somebody recognizes 
that's what you, so you can extrapolate that and apply it to whatever it is that you do, right? Think about your guests, think about your audience first, but that's the kind of reaction that you want to get. And it's very, it's very nice to hear when somebody says that. And I had to share it with you because I have nobody else to share it with. So I just couldn't keep it up inside, but that was very, very, that was a gift that he gave me uh, by saying that. So, and I look, you know what you can do in the clubhouse tonight, since we're going to have to end early because I'm, you know, still thinking about my, my lost gear. Um, who would go get the chocolate sea salt cookie, cookie bar summer house? Oh, Elizabeth, I need to do like the full cookie house experience. Um, when I come back from the trip, um, I'm going to go and do a live review there. If only there was somebody, any, anybody who wants to do a review of the cook, of summer house with me. I'm also famished, by the way. Um, post in the clubhouse, who else, within reason, or without reason, you might like to hear me interview on a future episode of the show, right? And if you have to, you can be context as to why you're picking that person. So, uh, yeah. So I love doing interviews. I, I love, I love, uh, I love, especially giving people who may not be as well known, giving them a platform to share their story. So, uh, and I love being able to have the gift of, of sharing that with you. Elizabeth says, Darren and I will come back for uh, my funky chicken sandwich of the bag. Oh my gosh, Kenny, I forgot about the funky chicken sandwich. It's so close, yet so far away. Uh, Sue Passauer, Eisner is sort of my white whale. Eisner does not really do interviews at all. He did, years ago after he left the company, he didn't do them at all. And then he did a few about when his book Camp came out, but he would not talk about Disney. He would only talk about Camp. Great. But I needed him to talk about Disney. Enough time has passed that, um, you know, hopefully I would have that opportunity. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully someday. Because I think the stories he will tell now, having been removed from the company for so many years, will be much more impactful than when they're still cast members and sort of have to, you know, uh, speak within certain limitations. Kristen says more cast members. Um, I love interviewing cast members. Not every cast member is, is able to chat, you know, for a variety of different reasons. But um, so Gareth says I should interview on the hoop. So I interviewed Rob Lott uh, probably know, five six months ago. So I interviewed Rob Lott, who uh, you may or may not know from the Hoop to Do musical review, and he shared some great stories about working at the Hoop. Uh, you know, I think I had Mark Daniel on a live show years ago. I don't know if I've ever had... Um, oh, Eric Fisher jumping on... Uh, Jeff C. literally reached out to Eric Fisher and was like, Dude, you need to go on Lou's show because he hasn't seen... I've seen Lord of the Rings, but it's been decades. It's been decades since I've seen it. So forgive me that I'm not Jeff C. and I don't have Lord of the Rings memorized and a big tribute to... Vigo Mortensen, see, on my wall, but I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Uh, some of the chefs, I think I've had chefs before around some of the festivals, not necessarily on full podcast, but sort of shorter interviews. Um, I watch The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings once a year. It's on my list. I, I promise it is on, it, it is on my list. Um, Oh, I saw the door open. I thought somebody was coming out. I'm like, look, I found your bag. It's not. It's not. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I really need the stuff that's in that bag. And now I'm going to have to go and remember what I lost. Remember who you are. And remember what I lost. And then buy it again before next week. So, say lobby. But I got to talk to John Rice and Davy. So there's that. It's a little bit of a trade-off. Mary, I think the bag is probably long gone because if I did leave it in the main area of, of Planet Hollywood, it's, it's probably gone. So, Sue, I talked to Sean Astin. It was during one of the marathon weekends, but like eons ago. Like, I mean, we're probably talking... It's like when Sean Astin was just sort of Sean Astin doing the marathons. Um, and I don't remember... Maybe I didn't record it for the show. I did. Maybe it was like maybe I was live one morning. I don't remember. It's been a it's been a long, long, long time. So 
but I'll put the question in the clubhouse and let me know who uh, who else you would like to interview. I have a list. I have a list of folks that uh, I would love to have on the show. And, you know, Michael Eisner, I, I would have a very, very respectful conversation with him because I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about how he left. I want to talk about the, the work that he did while he was there and the good that he did for the company. And so much of this that we see because of, specifically because of Michael Eisner. So, um, but Jim Rohoski, thank you very much. Jim, I promise you when I come back, I know I've been saying to you, like my schedule's been crazy, but I promise when we get together for uh, lunch or breakfast or both, maybe brunch or just, yeah, Michael Eisner would be, uh, Michael Eisner would be sort of the guest. We'll have a notice. Kurt Russell. Kevin, I've had Kevin Feige on the show before. Um, I, I would love to. I have a lot. To, I have a lot of questions for Kevin right now that I would like to ask him on the show again. So who knows? You never know. Maybe when one of the next big releases comes out. Um, Kurt Russell. God. But Kurt Russell is one of those folks that, like, I, I, I can't get a, I, a half hour is not enough. Like, you need, like, hours with Kurt Russell because he's a man of multi gen look I could talk to him for an hour just about being Snake Plissken so um, you know or why did Walt Disney say your name I mean I, I literally right now if, if he sat down um, I have a lot of I have a lot of questions so um, yeah I know there's a lot of love for Kurt Russell I, maybe I'll have to see J.J. Abrams my problem with J.J. Abrams is all I would talk about would be lost it would just be a loss. I mean, I know he's done so much more, and he's, he's a remarkable storyteller. Um, but if I had a chance to talk to somebody from Lost, I've interviewed Bob Gurr before. Um, my Bob Gurr moment was, and, and I maybe he was lying to me, but I'm going to take it as truth. We were at an event up in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Bob Gurr was there, and they had a Dole Whip machine. And I was sitting down with him in the lobby, and I was interviewing him, where I was prepping to interview him. I don't know what it was. And somebody brought us Dole Whips, and he's like, this is my first ever, my, my first Dole Whip ever. And I'm like, ever today? He's like, no, I've literally never had a Dole Whip. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm sharing a Dole Whip with Bob Gurr while he's having his first one. I'm a Disney nerd. It was a big moment for me, so. Kenny Ortega, I'm sort of quickly scrolling through and seeing some of the other names that are... Nick Favre is watching. I'm not sure if there's any connection to Brett Favre. Um, Josh, stay tuned. Just stay tuned. Um, George Takei. George Takei would be a great get. Again, I was a Star Trek fan way, way back when, and, and I know he was in Mul uh, Mulan, but you can't talk to him without talking to him about you know, Star Trek. So, you know, Bill Farmer, I'm... 91.7% sure I've had Bill Farmer on the show. But maybe it was Mouse Tunes. Maybe that's why. Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm thinking back on Mouse Tunes. But I know I spoke to, to Bill Farmer a long, long, long time ago. Um, uh, Michael Iceberg. So I reached out to Michael Iceberg years ago. I don't remember... I don't remember how that conversation ended. But obviously, I never got him. Did I get him on the show? No. Um, Eric asked me about parameters. I mean, I'd like to have some sort of a Disney, Marvel, Star Wars connection, but that could be relatively free-flowing. I'm not sure if Eric is throwing his hat in the ring or Eric is asking me on behalf of Jeff to have Jeff come on the show. Um, Alex, I just saw you say Bob Wilson. Forgive me that I don't know who Bob Wilson is. Uh, Rob, I have had Marty Sklar. Thank God I had Marty Sklar because it would be really tough to get him now. I have had Marty Sklar on the show. Um, if Travis Kelsey wins Super Bowl MVP and records his going to Disney commercial, maybe you can interview him and Taylor Swift. Uh, Liam Neeson, Chris Evans, John Favreau. My God, Heather. Uh, the... I would need days. Just lock me in a room with John Favreau because I have questions for days. Like, I'm going back to Rudy and we're just going to go forward from there. Who's the wild man now and everything 
that happened thereafter. Um, yeah, so Bill Farmer was probably Bill Farmer was probably a mouse tunes. I could probably I could I could probably get Bill Farmer again. He's he's, he's pretty accessible. Um, Dave Filoni, yeah, Dave Filoni. I would need to do like I mean I always do a lot of research, um, but Dave Filoni I would have to do like a ton of. I love the research. I love. It's, I think it's the trial attorney in me. I love doing the research on people and trying to find and pick out the questions that nobody's asked them. Like, that's my goal. Like, I want to ask you something that nobody's ever asked me. I was, I had a, when I was talking to John upstairs, there was a lot of, there's a lot happening in Planet Hollywood all at once. And I'm asking this question and there's somebody behind me, like, moving my phone out of the way and I think that's stopped the video or fine um, and so my my question sort of became a little more convoluted than I would have liked because um, you get you know you get a limited amount of time with these folks um, but some people are very very generous with their time too yeah Spielberg Lucas probably would never do I don't think Lucas really does you know a, a lot um, but I, I also have questions for Lucas I have questions for Lucas too so um I, I saw somebody say Chris Hemsworth purely for um, Bob Wilson was head of the Disney family business hired by Walt who worked under Mickey Mouse and Mickey Clark. Uh, Alex Mayer, let's talk offline. Let's talk offline. Um, so Michael, uh, wait, who was it? Uh, Corey Burton. So Michael, probably 15 years ago, uh, like... It, I bet you it's longer than that. I'll bet you it's... So I've been doing this 19 years. I'll bet you it was 17 years ago. I found Corey Burton. And I was, like, reaching out to him and, like, trying to, like, one, explain what a podcast was and why I wanted to have him on. And we were sort of back and forth for a while. And then eventually it just sort of died on the vine. But Corey Burton, as you may or may not, has done a, a ton, a ton, ton, ton of voices, um, especially here in the Bronx. I just looked one more time just to make sure my bag did not magically appear. So, uh, yeah, well, we can put, we can keep this sort of conversation going in the clubhouse and see uh, Oscar Isaac. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these folks that I would love to, but a lot of times they won't, they don't necessarily do stuff unless they're promoting something or they're on uh, a, a press junket. Um, Sue, I did have Jody Benson on, it's maybe six, eight months ago, somewhere around there. Uh, so, you never know. I have... Uh, in my, in my mind, I have a list of Alan Tudyk. So I reached, Kira, I reached out to Alan Tudyk um, a couple of different ways a, a long time ago. And, and maybe because he wasn't doing, I wanted him then because he wasn't doing anything, but maybe because he wasn't doing anything, he wasn't doing anything in terms of interviews. But I would love to, um, I would love to interview Alan Tudyk. I, just from like Firefly alone, um, I would really laugh. Alan Tudyk's, and I want to do my King Candy impression. I won't do it for you because I don't want you to like, you know, disconnect right away. But uh, my kids hated my King Candy impression. We'll see if Alan Tudyk hated it as well. So, um, yeah, Dent. So Beth, I've never watched Dent with the Stars ever. Um, yeah, I've never. I've never. I, maybe I've seen an episode or two, but not. Um, Karen Gillian, yeah, I don't think. I mean, these are all folks, you know, that that are huge names, especially in terms of the MCU. Um, yeah, so Beth, I don't watch a lot of TV. Period. <laughs> Security. I'm still here, but I'm I'm packing up. I I lost my bag. I lost my I lost a bag like this, oh, really? and I think I left it on the table where I was sitting downstairs. Oh, so I gotta try and run inside and see if I can find it. Uh, I can go. I'm gonna go because they can tell I'm like stressing because I have like I have like in equipment it? like gear. Oh, okay. yeah. So nothing valuable. Nothing. It's not like cash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> oh man. Did you get a chance to talk to? Uh, 
John Hall was awesome. Yeah? Did you? Yeah? Wait, so, so come over so people can it see was, you. It was awesome. So is he not the nicest man in the world? Um, the best guy I've met in my life. Like, yeah. commanding presence, which is yes. very approachable, very accessible. Very nice. Very well-spoken. Like, yes. Very, very intelligent man. I told him, I was like, you know, I liked, I liked him better than Harrison Ford. He had a better personality. He's like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we stopped recording, he, he shared some very honest oh, thoughts. He did. You know, that's, he was uh, very approachable. I couldn't believe he walked over to us, gave us a big hug, and shook his nice. hand. Yeah, when he, when he, after he did the little presentation, he just, they he wanted to whisk down. him upstairs, and he just started walking the floor. He did. And just going up to random tables. He like, did. He started, he, he started sitting down with everybody. Yeah. He started talking. Like, he, great. Eating chicken people fingers. People, it was funny, though, because all young people didn't, didn't know, know who the hell he was. <laughs> I'm like, dude, Sala is sitting right at your table, like, right now. You there was a couple next to us who were like, who is that guy? I'm like, I know. I'm, I was even going to waste my breath. I know. It was pretty funny. But, um, yeah, we like, we saw your podcast, like, He's over there still. I said, he, didn't let, he never left. I got a light. I got a late start. Um, and I'm going to do an early stop because I have to go and try and see if I can if I can uh, track this down. So. so we left. We're like, he's upstairs, I think. Let's go see him real quick. Yeah, we were upstairs at, like in that little like private section. And then I, I was going to let everybody know the box. He still owes me a ride on a rise <laughs> resistance ride. So wait, why do, tell me why I owe it to you. We were over there uh, back in June. You were walking by. And I said, let's go. It was like 20-minute wait. And you're like, no, I can't do it. I was like, let's go. It was a very calm night. I'll make it. I did. I am a man of my word. I will make it up to you. And I was like, oh, we went last night. We walked right on it. We were like, oh, my God. Like, Where's Lou at? He's looking. <laughs> hey, we rode it 100 times. It's still fantastic. No, don't sweat it. No, because I have to go upstairs to that. I think I left it up there. I think that's where I left it. So. Uh, but you're just in time to say goodbye because I am going to wrap things up and make my way uh crawling on the floor of Planet Hollywood. Stay tuned tomorrow. I am going to share as much as I can from Megacon starting late afternoon. I'll be back again Friday or Saturday, maybe both. Uh, and if you're going to be at Megacon, let me know. We'd love to meet up and say hi. I apologize for being late. I apologize for ending early, but I love and appreciate you, you, individually and collectively. Uh, I would not be here without you. Let's see if we can make it happen again. <laughs> There you go, yeah. I do it. <laughs> this one, there's this one too. Wait, there it is. Oh, there they go. There's another one. I think it's this, this, this. I keep forgetting what they are. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it may be, I hope that this is your best week ever. Um, I look forward to seeing you again next week from the big blue ocean. It's going to be exciting no matter what. Because Becky's going to be there. Anyway, have an amazing night. Thank you again. See ya.